Hey, we got the uh, AEW show. Adam Cole, Dax Harwood. Very, very good match. 15 minutes. And uh, Martha Hart's family was there, so they did like a whole bunch of uh, Brett Owen spots and the sharpshooter and... And uh, Dax got sent ribs first into the post, sold his ribs the entire match. Finally, he goes for the sharpshooter, but his ribs give out. And uh, ultimately, Adam Cole puts him in the sharpshooter. Ribs are so bad, he's forced to submit. This was a great match. So Adam Cole moves on to the semifinals. We had CM Punk, whose gimmick is he hates Long Island. Every show in Long Island, he's a heel. And so he comes out, he's got an Islanders jersey on for some bloke that It's a relatable gimmick, by the way. And the fans are furious at this guy, and he faces hometown guy John Silver, and he beats him with the buckshot lariat. And let me tell you something. Huge fan of punk, great worker. This is the best working punk there's ever been. This guy ain't coordinated. And, bro, (laughs) this was a live show, and this dude's got balls. Because he stood on that apron, and he stood there for a while. And he's in his mid-40s, and he was going to do a flip over the ropes, land on his feet, and do a buckshot. And, bro, he stood, and, man, and he did it! And he hit the buckshot, and he pinned this guy. And, of course, Paige is on commentary. He's furious. Comes down to the ring, and they have a stare down. And, essentially, Punk has said, I'm going to beat you with the paper, and you're going to shake my hand one way or the other. And he wants a handshake, and Paige just flips him off. We had uh, Tony Nese versus Danhausen. So uh, this match was like 30 seconds. Uh, they go down to the ring. Everyone's behind Danhausen. Uh, St- uh, Mark Sterling interferes. Danhausen gets kneed in the face and pinned immediately. Okay. And uh, I saw this and I was like, dude, this guy ain't ready. Because he shattered his leg in two in uh, at ho- around Halloween. So I guess that's why. Nope. He's actually all right. His leg's great. So this was just the story they wanted to tell. And I'm very happy that his leg is great because, you know, he snapped that thing in two. And Sid, a guy like Sid, never the same again. But uh, whatever they did, he's uh, he's good to go. So they're going to be doing a tag match at the pay-per-view. Hook comes out. He clears the ring of the heels. Dan Housen offers a handshake. And Hook shakes. And the place goes nuts. And Hookhausen is officially a team. We had the MGF Wardlow contract signing. To cut to the chase. It was great. MGF is uh, demanded that in order for Wardlow to get the, the match, A, he must take 10 lashings with a belt next week on Dynamite. And then he has to face Sean Spears in a steel cage match with MJF as the referee. Then they go to the pay-per-view, and if Wardlow loses, he can never sign a contract with AEW Wrestling. So uh, there's there's actually only two options. Either his contract is expiring, he's going to WWE, or uh, he's beating MJF. I'd bet on the uh, latter. We had uh, Ricky Starks versus Jungle Boy. Didn't have a ton of heat, but it was a good match. And uh, Ricky Starks tried to use the FTW title belt, so Swerve ran down to tell the referee, but he took the referee in doing so. And uh, Jungle Boy had a pin with a small package, but no ref. And the ref finally gets back in the ring. Starks hits Rochambeau and gets the win. And then uh, Christian, Luchasaurus, Starks, Hobbs, the whole crew, Keith Lee, they're all out there. So it looks like a three-way for the titles coming up at the pay-per-view. And uh, Jungle Boy is just demoralized. And uh, everyone's outside the ring except him. And then Christian gets in the ring. And Jungle Boy's back is turned. And Christian looks at him and then gives him a hug. Because ain't, ain't nothing done quick on this program. Oh, well, look at you. It's happening, brother. Just wait. Right. We had the Jericho Appreciation Society victory party. So the key is that Jericho makes a comment about Eddie Kingston's wife. Soon as he says it, Moxie's music hits. Moxie comes through the crowd. Jericho makes fun of him. There's only one of you. We'll, we'll kick your ass. We've got five of us in here. Then Daniel Bryan's music hits. He comes out with Wheeler, Yuta, and Regal. It's still five on four. Jericho's like, come on in here. But, of course, Eddie Kingston with his face all burnt. Santana and Ortiz. They come in out of the crowd. The Jericho Appreciation Society now greatly outnumbered 
But in this situation, the fans are just so happy to see these guys get theirs. Eddie goes right after Jericho. Jericho managed to escape. William Regal, pa-bam, gives him the power of the punch. No brass knucks, though. And uh, lays out Jericho is awesome. So it looks like, I don't know what it looks like. I presume a multi-person match at the pay-per-view and then blood and guts uh, would be my guess. We had the uh, Tony Storm, Jamie Hayter match. Also not a ton of heat for this match here, but it was a good match. And uh, uh, Storm ends up cradling her and turning that immediately into the Storm Zero and pinning her. And so it is uh, Tony Storm versus the winner of Britt Baker and the Joker coming up here soon. Friday. I'll have Fauntleroy do that in a while here. Dynamite next week, we have Jericho and William Regal having a face-to-face. Kyle O'Reilly versus Ray Phoenix in the Owen Hart Cup. Britt Baker versus the Joker in an Owen Hart Cup. Samoa Joe versus the Joker. They're calling it Wild Card Wednesday. Hangman Page versus Takeshita. Wardlow takes his 10 lashes from MJF. And Adam Cole faces the winner of tonight's main event, Darby Allen versus Jeff Hardy. We did a segment with uh, Scorpio Sky. We'll talk. You know what? I don't even want to talk about this segment because uh, I don't want to talk about. There's there's a match coming up Friday, and you know people are, so I'll have Fauntleroy do the spoilers. I'll talk about everything after Friday. And then we had Jeff Hardy versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen did this uh, this interview, and he said. Uh, Dude, I thought we were going to build up to this one. And he thought of all these video packages they could do, which would just be both guys doing totally crazy stuff. Dirt bikes, explosions, falling off the bridge into the river. But he said Tony wanted it tonight, so damn it, we're going to do our best tonight. And uh, they did. And to be honest, yes, in theory, it would be better to build this up over a long period of time, but... Bro, I watch this Jeff Hardy. Just just get this done. I don't know how long this guy's going to last. He is hurting, and they killed themselves in this match. The worst spot may have been not even the thing off the ladder under the chairs, but the very first spot is uh, Darby running as fast as humanly possible and doing his cannonball tope. And uh, listen, I've been wrestling for a long time. The worst is what you don't expect. Like, even though Darby came off that thing and Jeff went to... And they both crashed into the chairs, they both knew what was coming. It may have hurt more. I haven't asked anybody, but... The fact of the matter is, Jeff was expecting Darby to hit him with this big cannonball, okay? Which is what happened. But what was worse is Darby just flies. It was like a Civil War cannonball. He hit this dude so hard, and then worse... Jeff takes a bump on the cement, and as he lands, Darby then falls on him again, which Jeff Hardy was not expecting that second one. And, bro, that looked, and that was just the beginning. And then, man, they went from there, and as noted, you know, Darby came off third rung from the top of a very high ladder, threw a bridge of chairs outside, and Jeff missed a senton and hit the side of the steel steps. They were just killing each other. And finally, uh, Jeff goes for the, uh, or Darby goes for the coffin drop, hits it. And, uh, you know, it was really cl- clever. They actually did this cradle reversal in the opener, and it was a near fall. They did the exact same spot in the main event, and it was the finish. And Jeff Hardy pins Darby Allen. So Jeff Hardy moves on in the Owen Hart Cup. Darby Allen's devastated, but they did shake hands and hug afterwards. And, uh, man, if you're only doing this once, I mean, dude, these guys, you know, Jim Ross always talks about how these matches are career shorteners. And uh, and this one may have been. is brutal. So there you go. That was AEW Dynamite. I thought an excellent show. Excellent show, top to bottom. It was Darby Allen getting revenge for this new generation that has had to lay underneath Jeff Hardy as he comes down like that sack of fertilizer from the top shelf at Home Depot right down upon you, saying, 
just take this. <laughs> Darby Allen, the one thing about him is a lot of times with guys who do dives, you know, the setup takes forever, all that sort of thing. And, you know, even though they can be spectacular, they can be very contrived. The one thing that you can say about Darby Allen is he is very believable and the force and the velocity at which he flies out there to use his body as an offensive maneuver. It's just one big offensive maneuver is as good as anybody in wrestling. I mean, it's as believable as anybody who can do that sort of thing. It's it's he's absolutely awesome. I don't know how long he's going to last. He doesn't know how long he's going to last. Jeff Hardy, he ain't going to last too much longer. So as fast as they can get to the Young Bucks and the Hardys, I'm probably good with that. And however those two other dudes and then want to, you know, <laughs> go from there, that's on them. You did mention one thing about Wardlow. There is the outside possibility that – he could lose to MJF. He could go to Ring of Honor and almost in like a, a big Bubba Rogers sort of way when he was in the in Crockett and then ended up in the Mid-South UWF for a while to get seasoning, became their champion there, to get him some experience and then to have a way to bring him back that doesn't have anything to do with MJF. Oh, wait, he can't sign with AEW, but we'll welcome him in because he's the ROH champion. Uh, it's a, you know, and a contract could change that way or, or something like that. It is a long shot, but it is a possibility that a, a, slim, a slim one, but there is a possibility they could go that way. I would just rather see him win. But if you're trying to protect MJF for a reason, you do at least have that option. No offense to anyone named Bert. But when yeah. you spell it with a U, it's much worse. Vinny, you got to go to NXT and your name is Bert. Okay. <laughs> you can either spell it B E R T. Or B U R T. You're gonna look at both of those. You're gonna go E for sure. Yeah. Right, Craig. Craig knows. Yeah. Because like it's like I drank so much I burnt. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what? First it was narcissus. Okay. But then later it changed to the narcissist. Yes. With a T. Yes. But that wasn't narcissist. That was the narcissist. The narcissist. No. The narcissist. Who cares? <laughs> Bert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bert Narcissist. <laughs> like Bert. Bert. I'm sorry. I need to recover from Bert Narcissist. <laughs> He's such a narcissist. He kept the name Bert. Yeah. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.